In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to get started creating music faster. Everything is about workflow. When it comes to music creation, the music creation process, everything is about workflow. First and foremost, if you have no way that you know how to work comfortably and quickly and functionally, functionally, it's going to be that much harder to progress and it's going to be that much harder to get into the zone, to get into um, uh, the space in your mind where all the magic happens, so to speak. Today, we're just gonna be looking at basic things that can be applied to any DAW that you're working in. Cross-reference between what I'm doing here and the software that you may be working in, or if you're an Ableton like me, then more power to you. But let's get started here. This form takes practice. So, we're not going to be working with any sound today. This is just an overview of when I click the Ableton button, boom. When I click Ableton and Ableton opens up, this is what I see. This is my template here that I've created. That very simple, but it took so many years to, to get down. And any of my tracks, I know I'm going to have drums, bass, effects, hard brass, vocals, maybe, chants, melodies, and synths. I know that that's going to be the case for 98% of every single thing that I make within Ableton Live. So I set it up as such. Everything is in groups, first and foremost, for you, is to figure out when I sit down to make a track, and this can be figured out just from looking at what you've done before. You say, in all my tracks I've had drums. All right, 100% everybody has that, you know? And I have some sort of bass element, I have some sort of effects, and go on so forth. And then you just write these things down, and boom, just that step right there, you're already so much more ahead of the game in terms of sitting down and making music. This form takes practice. We open up our drum section here. I have a bars, bars prepared kit. So however your drum chains work or however your drum racks or however that works in any of your software for Ableton is, you know, you have, you can use an impulse, you can use a drum rack or you can just, you know, use separate channels and have samples. I put, bring in the drum rack. The drum rack allows you to drop in samples into each of these little things here. And each of them is already set up as a prepared chain. So this is why it's called the bars prepared kit. So in every chain, so my kick always goes here. My snare always always goes here, a uh, hi-hat always goes here, and another hi-hat always goes here. It's like that for every single one, and it's set up in such a way so it's ready. As you see, hat EQ, hat EQ, everything's got a utility so I can modulate the uh, volume. On the snare, I've got a snare EQ that's, you know, and a snare compressor if I may need it, and a utility. Everything on here has a utility and a compressor. Utility, EQ, and a compressor. That's that's the way it is on every single chain. So when I drop something in, it is ready to be tweaked. It is and it's ready. It's that much more instead of you know drop drop a sample and then drop the effects in. Like that takes too long. I just want to go. I want to go because I have this idea. You don't want to lose the idea. This form takes practice. Side chain, it it is a huge element of everything. So why do I only have two channels in the drums to, in the drum uh, group to start off? Well, if you look at three audio here, it's got a EQ setup that I like to use for just about everything where it has 109 hertz cut. So there's no lows interfering with my sub bass. And I have two sets of compressors on here because in my drum rack, I have a kick that goes here usually and a kick that goes here usually. They're for two separate things. My, one might, I might use on the buildup, one I might use on the drop. On one compressor, I have it already ready. It's routed already to channel one here on the drums. It's already routed, and so is the next compressor, but they each will go. So if I bring a sound in here, we could go to drum rack. So let's say we have this kick here. We have this kick. So we have this kick here, and we can go ahead and you see all the things are ready. So I can just click it, and it's already ready to go, and then so forth here. I can go here and find wherever the other kick is and I can, you know, get it in there and it's already ready to go. So that is a huge time saver. So that's how that works there. And then once I have rooted those compressors to the kicks that I'm trying to get to, I will go ahead and I will duplicate that maybe like five times. So I just have all these little tracks ready to go. You know what I'm saying? And everything's already side chained to my kick. 
this form takes practice. On the main master channel of each group, I have those same two compressors set up with different levels. On the bass, you've got, you know, the one compressor that goes to your main kick and the other one that goes to your secondary kick. And yeah, it's already set with the thresholds that I like and I can tweak them depending on the track, but these are things that usually work for me. So that's already set up. So all I have to do is go in there, click, boom, click, boom, and I'm done. And I'm ready to go. Click, boom, click, boom. It's the same thing on every single, on every single master channel of each group. This form takes practice. So if we open up our bass channel here, this bass channel is for anything that is sub bass oriented. So pretty much anything that has low end, low end. You know what I'm saying? So we have things that are ready like samplers, you know, so I can drop in an 808 or drop in any sort of sound that I might want to use as some sort of bass. And when I drop something in, if I need to like duplicate it, I can just duplicate it and I've got one just blank MIDI track that I can usually throw in the Ableton Live instrument or something, you know, some VST or something like that, you know, like the hip hop sub bass, for instance. You open up our effects, it's just a bunch of different things because most of my effects are just, you know, samples that I find. And if I need something, I can just open up a MIDI channel. So that's very basic. The hard brass is just one thing right now because, you know, and you can duplicate it. I do what I need to do here and put the effects on there. It's really quick. It takes like 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and then I'm, I'm gone. And the chance is just very simple, just two channel because those are usually just, you know, hoo, ha, hey, you know, some simple stuff, samples most of the time. Go to your melodies. Now, this is set up for, for making like trap music and hard style at the same time. So, you know, you've got. You're, you've got things like if you're going to be working with different samples, you've got audio channels here. And then I've got two MIDI channels for VSTs or, or instruments or whatever. And then I've got melodies. So if I'm, I'm working on a hard style project, I have this is the thing where I have my melodies, you know. So it's a group that's separate from everything, but inside of the same thing at the same time, if that makes sense, you know. And on top, it's got a punch and parallel just to keep the melody, you know, just a slight compression on it. And then it's got an overall thing so I can control the specific EQ within this group itself. You've seen I've talked about this before. I've got S1, D1, and D2 inside the sense, you know, which stands for screech one, drop one, drop two. And drop one, the EQ is right here at 86 hertz. That means that nothing is going to be inter interfering with my sub bass most of the time for most of these sounds. And then in D2, it's just got you know a 20 hertz cut so this can you know play synths or samples or whatever that are in my drop or somewhere that i want to have some sort of low end it doesn't mean this is drop one and that's drop two that's not what it means it's just different parts of the drop that have specific functionalities so to speak on the master channel there's nothing on the master channel just a simple endless smile and that's about it on endless smile i just you know use that for build-ups you know buildups or, or anything you, know, you can use this thing for so many different things but it's just a simple washout effects yeah this is just a custom effects chain that has a bunch of stuff i have to show it to you in action on the next video but it's just it's really nice for, for buildups and, and just getting you know a, a very interesting unique sound here and then endless smile and that's it until i'm ready to go into the mastering phase this form takes practice i master and this is going to be another video as well i master as i go if that makes sense while i'm working through the mix down I'm mastering the song at the same time. You know, if you can start with a good source sound, you're already 90, 90% there. You know, if you start with a good source sound and a good source knowledge of what you're doing within your software, you're 90% there. As far as getting a product, a, a sound and a record that is, you know, whatever quality you attribute to, you know, professional sound. This form takes practice. Last but not least is our vocal channel here. We've got vocal one. Inside of vocal one, if you open it up, we've got V1, which is vocal one, two. Those are the same thing, but whatever. Um, in here, we've got an OTT, which I use this to duplicate onto different channels. So let's say I have a verse, I have a chorus, I have a bridge. You know, I would. This stays off in this overall channel group here. It's just I just grab it, Command C, and paste it onto the separate groups itself because different things might need different amounts of OTT, which is a multi-band compression. And then I turn this on automatically, and then I can EQ the overall vocal chain with whatever I, however I needed to do so if I know that it needs a, some sort of cut to the low end frequencies I can do that right here simple then inside of here I've got my two things and I throw for this is for working with my voice specifically and sometimes Milano's voice I've got another thing for him but just for me I throw you know this is just 
some waves you know waves plugins you know it's just rvox and jjp vocals and sometimes a micro shift and i've got that right there and everything else is run through my universal audio uh interface but yeah that's that's pretty much it and it's just two of these and i can duplicate it as many times as i want but that's the template this form takes practice with a template like this that is tailored to your specific needs you can sit down anywhere anytime and get to the creative process so much faster and you'll be that much more functional when you're creating you know that just equals better music faster and not, not everything is about speed but you don't always want to be worrying about the little things you want to be worrying about creating something meaningful that's been it today folks hope you enjoyed this i hope you find this somewhat useful this is just a quick little overview into sitting down and getting to the creation process faster. Hope you have a good one. Next video coming soon. See you soon. This form takes practice. You're good enough.